Welcome to this video on marking and grading at university. My name's Andy Wicks and in this video we're going to look at how you get marks at degree level. To pass at degree level you must get over 40% and you have to pass every subject to get the whole qualification. You're not allowed to average things out except in some very specialised circumstances. Assume that you have to get over 40% in everything. So 40% is your pass mark. And the first year of the degree, well, what you want to do is pass. And a lot of students confuse that with, oh, I only need 40%. Well, that's not quite true. You see, if you want to do well, you've got to do well at the end. That's where all the grades come. And to do well at the end, well, you've got to have a good foundation. So the better you do in the first year, the better you So the better you do in the first year, the better you're going to do in the second year. The better you do in the second year, the better you're going to do in the third year. So all of these things add up over time. And if you go for good grades in the first year and make sure you have a really solid foundation, you're going to find that you get better grades at the end. That will always be true. Also, the first year, whilst it doesn't count to your degree, does count to the way you're seen at degree level. And so that whole, well, your images of somebody who is of this type is going to be dependent on everything that you do all the way through your degree course. Make sure that you get a good foundation and you're going to get a much better degree. The second year of your course will count towards your overall degree classification, usually 20%. So the better you do here, the better you're setting yourself up for the final year. And in the final year, well, that's where things really start to matter. There are four classifications of degree. A pass degree means that you completed all the units, but you didn't survive the project that you have to do at the end, the dissertation. If you get at that sort of classification, you cannot put ONS after your name. So you may become BA or B.Ed., but it won't be BA ONS or BED ONS or BSC ONS. If you do pass your project, and there's no reason why you shouldn't, if you do pass your project, then you're on for an honours degree. And the honours degree is split into four levels. There's a third class honours degree, which means, yeah, you just about made it. And really what it means is that you had a really good time at university and did the bare minimum that was needed to get through. A third doesn't normally show ability. It may also show that you failed one of the years. If you failed a year and had to repeat the year, then the best classification you can get is a third. Then you have the second class honours degrees. And second class honours degrees are split into lower second, an upper second. Lower second, yep, you did well, you're okay, you've passed. Upper second, you did well and you have passed. That is the equivalent of good grades in any other qualification. So the A's and B's at A level are the equivalent of the uh, upper second. A first class honours degree means that you did really well and that means that you're research ready. You've done a project that is vastly superior to those around you. And it is the project primarily that will say whether you get that sort of classification or not. If you get a first, you think, oh, I've got the best class of degree. I'm the one at the top. Because that's what you're used to at A-level. And to some extent, that's partially true. But... It also shows that you've been a bookworm and some employers prefer to have somebody with, say, a 2-1 to somebody with a first because a 2-1 shows that you've got a bit of social ability as well as quite a lot of academic ability. If you get a first, 
you can apply to go on to a PhD directly. Well, you'll apply to go on to an MPhil and therefore the PhD. If you get an upper second, normally you do a standard taught master's first before carrying on. And there are videos on each of these topics. A lower second means go out to work for a while, get some experience under your belt, and then come back for the master's. A third, pretty much the same, but maybe a little more experience. So now you've got a handle on the degree classifications. Now you're in a position to see where you're going on your degree course. A first isn't necessarily the best for you, and it will have a shelf life, about two, three years, in which you can go on to do the research degrees. That's because your research, the stuff that you did to get that first, will become out of date over time. You can do it, and it's always best to do it early.